one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Every service member has an obligation, not just, not just that they, that they can refuse a uh, legal order or an unlawful order, they have an obligation to. They have to. And so they have to make a decision for themselves where that line is. Anyone can understand why these people, after six days, are still in this filthy, filthy, miserable convention center. Why are they still here? There's the freeway here. I tell you what I would have done, I would, what I would still do, I would say, let them walk out of here. Let them walk away from the filth. Let them walk away from the devastation. Let them walk away from the dead bodies in here. Them walk out of there because I'm standing right above that convention center. And what they've done is they've locked them in there. The government said, you, you go here and, and you'll get help. Or you go in that Superdome and you'll get help. And they didn't get help. They got locked in there and they watched people being killed around them. And they watched people starving and they watched elderly people not get any medicine. And now they know it's happening because we've been telling them repeatedly over and over every day. And you know what they're doing now? And I'm not blaming anyone. I'm telling you what's happening. They have set up a checkpoint at the bottom of this bridge. That This is the bridge that takes you from New Orleans over into Gretna, from Orleans Parish into Jefferson's Parish. It's the only way out. It's the, it's the connection to the rest of the world. And they've set up a checkpoint. And anyone who walks up out of that city now is turned around. You are not allowed to go to Gretna, Louisiana from New Orleans, Louisiana. Over there, there's hope. Over there, there's electricity. Over there, there's food and water. But you cannot go from there right, to Chef, there. I think the government will not allow you to do it. It's a fact. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't let them walk out of here. Let them walk the hell out of here. Let them get on that interstate and walk out. Walk. We had Walmart deliver three trucks of water, trailer trucks of water. FEMA turned them back. They said we didn't need them. This was a week ago. Uh, FEMA, uh, we had a hundred, we had a thousand gallons of diesel fuel on a Coast Guard vessel docked in my parish. The Coast Guard said, come get the fuel right away. When we got there with our trucks, they got a word. FEMA says, don't give you the fuel. Yesterday, yesterday, FEMA comes in and cuts all of our emergency communication lines. They cut them without notice. Our sheriff, Harry Lee, goes back in, he reconnects the line, he posts armed guards on our line and says no one's getting... Before we issued our declaration of 10 orders that we will not obey, and what those are designed to do is to get the troops thinking ahead of time about where their line in the sand is in advance. And that's what we're hearing in feedback from people in National Guard units is that, that in Katrina, that's kind of what happened, is the police and the military there, the National Guardsmen, were were caught off guard and really hadn't thought about it in advance. Walking up and down these streets, you don't, you don't want to think about the stuff that you're going to have to do. Somebody pops around the corner. Let me shoot in America. Yeah. And what we're hearing is, is that it won't be the same way next time. There'll be more who will say, no, I'm not going to do that.